I've really got to step up. Take 373 action. I'm Father Louis Barricat presenting from the beautiful St. Mary's Cathedral in Sydney. The topic I've been asked to reflect on is St. Joseph, foster father of the Son of God. Now, when I say foster father, immediately what I'm highlighting is the reality that Joseph is not the biological father of Jesus. And that's important. Why? Because it leads us to recognize that Jesus is no ordinary man. He is the only begotten Son of God, the Father Almighty. He is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he is born of the Virgin Mary. His birth is a miraculous one. And Joseph, this ordinary man betrothed to Mary, is right there when it happens. But he's there only because he chooses to step up. You see, we hear at first about how when Joseph received news that Mary had conceived and was with child, and how at the time all he knew that was a child wasn't his own, he was preparing to walk away. Now this walking away I don't see as a sign of weakness or as a cop-out. I think Joseph, being the just man he is, as scripture tells us, was looking for what would be the best action, not just for himself, but also for his betrothed and the child that he believed now was alive in her womb. By walking away, I think Joseph would be creating space for the father of that child to step up and to assume their rightful responsibility. See, Joseph understands the importance of fatherhood, even if he's not the biological father. It's only through a revelation from God that Joseph comes to discover that the father of the child in Mary's womb is the divine Father Almighty, and that he is being invited to step up and become the earthly father to Jesus. What a call! Now you can only imagine how that disturbed his own plans at first. He was betrothed to Mary. Both of them had already planned how they would live out their conjugal love in a radical way of chastity, giving glory to God in the way that they would serve one another in purity. But Joseph, when hearing this news, shows too that he was willing to set aside his own plans or goals as wholesome as they may have been already and give over and make room for God to come in and to fulfill his heart's desires in ways that he never would have imagined. Joseph would have been an emotional man. He would have experienced all the passions that we do today, but he shows that he's not about to allow passions to control or dictate his actions. And so that's something for us to reflect on too. Do we allow God's love for us to be the source and inspiration of all that we do in our own lives? Joseph steps up and becomes a part of the Holy Family. We shouldn't see the term foster father as being a diminishment in some way of Joseph's role in God's saving plan. Instead, we should see it as how this ordinary man became a part of the life of the Divine Son, Jesus, and the Immaculate Conception, Mary, and how he was there at the important times in their lives to be a true father, a guardian and protector, a provider, and carer, one who would be of service to the great mystery of our faith, the mystery of the Incarnation. Saint Joseph knew what he was saying no to when he chose to give his life in service of God. But the reason he could say no to something good and wholesome was because of his trust in what he would be saying yes to. On this last point, imagine Joseph at the miraculous birth. 
knowing that he would never carry children of his own by his own choice he was then given the front row seat to welcome into his hands and heart the only son of God Joseph was the first man to receive the body of Christ and how that changed the course of his life. Brothers and sisters, I urge you with great confidence to turn to him, to go to Joseph, and to know that like him, you too can say yes to God and to discover a life fulfilled by a radical plan of God's immense love for you. Saint Joseph, foster father, of the Son of God and our Father in the faith pray for us.